Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Avery Lefebvre, and this is Chadwick Von Chattington III. We're your new hosts of the new Angry Snowboarder morning show. Kind of morning show, might be an afternoon show. I don't know where you're watching it, but you're going to get a daily show three days a week from us. That's right, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Wednesday and Friday are devoted to live streaming. So, if you're bored, which I'm sure all of us actually are, because we're all self-isolating, you have nothing to lose by watching this. It is a new show, so it's going to be rough for the first couple episodes. But you do get Randy, formerly the warranty guy, doing workouts. So hopefully we can keep you snowboarders of the internet in shape. There's going to be other PSAs, skits, rants, and we're working on setting up a Google number so you guys can call in and talk to both of us. Now, is that something you're interested in? Leave me a comment down below. Chad will respond to it, not me. Chad, right there. Right, bud? Yeah, see? He's going to respond to this. He's fucking dumber than a box of rocks. Look at him. There's nothing in there. But he's my co-host now because we're in self-isolation. and Well, frankly, I've turned into Will Smith from I Am Legend. So, you know, next I'm going to be trying to swipe right on her and take her on a Tinder date. So hopefully you guys are going to enjoy the show. This episode is going to be a lot shorter than what we're working towards, but we're going to progressively build it up and out to something a little bit more. It's a snowy day here at the studio, which means fuck all for just about anyone else out there. But hey, that's what's going on outside. So there you go. You get to know what my weather looks like. Hopefully your weather is good. Because I can't go outside in this shit. Might get arrested. Also, for any of you mountain town dwellers that are looking for something to do, and maybe you live near an Airbnb and there's a hot tub, that's free for the poaching. I should know because I did it last night, and it was fucking glorious. There's just something about sitting in a hot tub and soaking in the cold night of winter. Actually, technically we're in spring now, aren't we? Still, it was cold. I was in the hot tub. It was great. No one even knows I'm there. And even better, the hot tub service company is still servicing the damn thing, so I'm getting it cleaned, and I'm the only one using it. It's fucking amazing. Chad, what do you think? That's right, Chad. You weren't there. You don't know. Here's a little PSA for all you non-mountain residents. There is no life hack with coming up here to avoid the coronavirus, the pandemic, whatever the fuck you want to call it, and getting away from where you are. In fact... We're actually worse off than you. We have less hospital beds, less ventilators, less resources. By you coming here, you stress everything. Which, yesterday, it looks like 400 plus of you from out of state all gathered at Tuckerman's Ravine in New Hampshire. And, well, frankly, that's, that's not cool at all. At fucking all. <laughs> you people really, really, really shouldn't be going to trailheads, and I drove around the county yesterday and went up to a trailhead, and the amount of cars there, fucking astronomical. Social distancing, people, the more we, the sooner we all do our part, the sooner we can get back to whatever a normal life will be after this. Take this fucking seriously. You know, take it seriously like that mole on your skin that wasn't there a couple weeks ago and might be cancerous, and now you're getting it removed and biopsied. You gotta take it seriously like that, right, Chad? <laughs> Chad agrees with me. I think. I don't, I don't know what he's doing over there. I, I can't fucking understand a word this man says. It's all fucking gibberish to me. But seriously, if you're thinking of running away to a mountain town, this, it, it's not the place to do that. Like I said, limited resources to begin with. Your second, third home, no one cares. Uh, I worked at a liquor store. My coworker at the liquor store is IDing anyone that walks in that he doesn't recognize, and if you have an out-of-state ID, he's booting your ass out. And there's a grocery store attached with that. So now you can't get groceries and booze. But, you know, hey, don't be that asshole. Also, Airbnbs are supposed to be locked down in a lot of communities, and I still see you fucking asshole owners renting them out. Well, you know what? That's a $5,000 fine and up to 18 months in jail, I believe, is what they're doing for Colorado. Plus, you can get your license revoked. So if anyone in any of the mountain towns in Colorado sees someone running out an Airbnb short-term to out-of-state people or something, 
call your local police department's dispatch because it's a health and wellness violation. I found that out because I actually asked a police officer about it yesterday. And we're going to all have to do our part. On a plus side, though, the precarious housing market bubble and blight of Shred Towns, I think it'll be coming to an end because all these people that were airbnb and that leveraged themselves are starting to realize with no income coming in how fucked they are and they'd be better off having a long-term person. So I think what we're going to see in the long term is rental prices coming down. And this is actually a really good thing because if the prices come down, we'll have more people move back to the mountains. If we have more people move back to the mountains, we don't have such a drain on the the work pool and how everyone's working three, four jobs to survive and everyone's miserable. I think by offering more housing, you get more people, more jobs are filled. So not everyone's being stressed when they're the only person at a job that requires three people. Plus it would be really nice to see rental prices drop down because they've, they've gotten too damn fucking high. Just like this meme. And now we're going to go to Randy, the workout guy. Hopefully you'll learn a little something from him. Mainly not to do what he says ever, because he's addicted to Zima and trucker speed. All right, Randy, tell the people what you got. All right, all you snowboarders of the internet. If you don't know who I am, I'm Randy, the warranty guy. But I got laid off, so now I'm Randy, the workout guy, because everyone's got me over here showing you guys how to get in shape for next season. So why don't you bear with me as I give you a new routine to try that way. Hopefully by next season, we'll all be in shape and we won't just be a pile of shapes. Starting off, we're going to do a nice forearm stretch. So put your arm out straight or as straight as you can. As you can see, Randy's elbow does not work as well as his other elbow. Man, there's free cheese grating accident. Kind of fucked it up. Anyways, put it out in front of you, palm facing up. With your other arm, reach out, grab it, and pull down to the floor. This is going to stretch out your forearm for you right in there. Now, some of you guys, and maybe the ladies, have put someone in a similar grip like this, but usually you end up flipping them to the floor. Do not flip yourself to the floor. That would be really bad. It happens to me every time I go to the bar, and Becky Sue and Billy Ray are there, and I, they're cavorting and shit, and I'm just getting angry. Anyways, you want to pull down on your fingers and really stretch it out through this muscle in here, all right? Now, what that's going to do for you... It's just limber up that forearm. You want to hold that for about a 10 count, if you can count that high. I can't get past 8, but they tell me there's two numbers after that. So anyways, all right. After you do your right arm, you're going to do your left arm. Same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight plus one, eight plus two. That's 10. And you're done. Do that. Three times. Get that three. Those are the, the fingers between your pinky and your thumb. Three. You want to do that three times total. Got it? Good. And we're back from Randy the Workout Guy. That was actually slightly more informative than I thought it would be. That's, that's fucking sad. Randy's becoming the voice of reason and working out when we're all self-isolating and being stuck inside. But on a plus side... We all need to take this seriously and stay in shape because we don't want to come out of this with heart disease and the diabetes. Right, Chad? <laughs> Chad's got the diabetes. I think he's missing both of his kidneys and his brain. In what might become a new recurring segment, I don't really know. The show is completely new. We've got the asshole of the day. And, you know, I get a lot of comments asking questions or people making stupid statements on videos and shit. So I figured... If I have to deal with the stupidity, everyone else should bask in the glory of it. So, on our 2019 Rome Targa binding review that Kevin did, unfortunately Kevin is not here. He's probably playing with his wiener. I don't really know what he's doing. Uh, we got a comment from Jason Eaton. And let me preface this with some of you people are going to be face palming after this. Please don't touch your palm to your face unless you've washed your hands. I bought them in 2015. There wasn't a single review for them on Evo. I wanted the top notch hard binding, 400 bucks. They were the shit. Enabled me to surf 10 times better. I left the most kick ass review possible. The following year, there were like 25 reviews for it. 
I feel I'm responsible for the success of these babies. Are you snowboarding or fucking surfing over there, Jason? So I respond, and bear with me, people. Whatever you need to tell yourself, you hashtag snowboard influencer. Jason Eaton. Angry snowboarder, it's a fact. My response. Only in your mind there, buddy. Jason Eaton. Which part of my text didn't you understand? Oh, I understood it. You're just a fucking narcissist. And no one really gives a shit about your fucking review. But let's dive deeper into this, everybody. Jason Eaton. Again, so there was a nine or 10 hour difference between these two comments, just so you know. This guy was that pissed, he had to come back and leave another comment. There were five reviews for the target, then I came along. The next year, there were 50 reviews. The following year, I wrote another one. There were only 11 reviews. The following year, there were 98 reviews. So now there's 50 reviews when you said the following year, there were like 25 reviews. So now you're doubling your number. Okay, all right, I get you, that's fine. As we all know, I'm not one to take shit from anyone. Right, Chad? Chad agrees. My response. You're the best influencer that ever lived. You influence Rome Target reviews more than anyone. You are the sole cause for the growth and sales of the only high-end freeride-specific binding Rome has ever made. You and your work will be remembered as being the catalyst for causing Rome to move hundreds of thousands of Targas solely because one user review on one snowboard site that doesn't have countless other media with real audiences linking to it. In fact, there is no such thing as snowboard media influence on product because you have absconded with it. Rome's advertising and publications was actually cut by two-thirds after your user review was published because there was nothing that could pale in comparison to the product you were moving. Rome was going to discontinue this binding until you came along and caused them to rethink its marketing, sales, and design. In fact, at one point, Rome was going to rename it to the Eaton in honor of your bravery and courage to be a pioneer in writing online reviews on store websites. It was this selfless act that caused Rome to continue pushing on in perfecting the design aesthetic of the target. To this day, it is said that the name Jason Eaton is whispered, is whispered with a reference in the design section of One Derby Lane in Waterbury, Vermont. Yes, yes, this man, and this man alone, wrote the Amazon review of all reviews on Evo's website. And it drew fucking sales through the roof. Not all the other media pushing it, not advertising, not people with actual audiences recommending it, but this one man. Jason, very, very pissed about this. Nothing that could pale in comparison, in quotes. Hello, you gotta, LOL, you gotta learn how to use expressions. You're going a bit mental there, mate. I'm just saying I significantly boosted sales for the Targa from 2015. Yes, yes, you and you alone boosted the sales. Just you. My response. Ah, yes, the great shortage of Rome Targas in 2015, the year that demand outpaced supply as a result of one man's mediocre written review that compares to those left on Amazon. A piece of succulent wording buried underneath marketing spiels and a buy it now. Wording that was so prophetic that he and he only changed the sales trajectory of the highest end binding offering from Rome Snowboards at that time. This man and this man alone deserves his special e pad on the back for being the driving force for all Rome Targa sales. His anecdotal facts usurp the analytics of all media running affiliate links to this product. His belief in his reach outpaces that of the then Transworld Buyer's Guide, reach which was largely believed to have the broadest reach in snowboarding. It surpassed that of White Lines Onboard Method, Free Run Sequence Snowboarder, and Snowboard Mag's advertising prowess. This is the hero you didn't know you needed, nor the hero that you wanted, but he is here to wear the mantle for all to bask in the internet glory of his sole influential written review. Review that is the best review of all time. It has changed the landscape of snowboard binding marketing forever. Remember that, people. This is the man that you needed. This is the man. Not us. Not any media. Not anarchy.com. Hell, not even the good ride. And that place fucking sucks. Jason Eaton again. I caused the interest for the Targa to skyrocket from 5 reviews to 98, probably causing tens of thousands more in sales. The least you can do is give me some respect, you worm. Respect is something you earn, not something that is given because you wrote one fucking review that no one fucking read. 
Ah, Jason, does someone want a participation trophy? Because that's what it sounds like to me. No, it does not sound like that. Oh, it definitely sounds like that, you no-talent ass clown. My response, whatever you need to tell yourself to cope with the fact you wrote a review. At this point, I would probably make a participation trophy and give it to him, but that would just encourage his selfish, narcissistic behavior and, well, fuck this guy. Jason Eaton. Angry Snore, I mean, why can't you let me enjoy this? Am I saying I'm a genius and everything I touch turns to gold and I can promote any product and it would work? No. I just spent many years with shitty equipment, like probably two decades, and I really thought long and hard how to fix that. I studied all the bindings. I tried a few, and I found that the Targa was the absolute shit. And I described in my review exactly why and motivated people to buy them, and it worked. Because the success of a product is often random, and it's like a psychological trick. Some bindings had dozens of reviews before 2015, and I don't think they really deserve them. I stimulated a few people who went and bought them and left some reviews, and it just snowballed. Yes! Yes, you you were the pebble that started the, the rock slide. Just you and you alone, nothing else. You got a lot of participation trophies as a child, didn't you? It, it, this guy has a wall of participation ribbons from track and field day. This is a given. You wrote a review that didn't influence shit. You claim that your one review sparked a whole revolution because you're looking at anecdotal evidence and coincidence. I get it. You want a pat on the back and a good job, pal. You really saved this binding from fading into obscurity, minus the fact 2015 they had a larger media buy and marketing push for it. They had writers pushing it, and there were countless publications pushing it, and there are reviews of it. Do you really need to win this bad? Because if you do, maybe you should just walk away from everything you're doing right now. So I went, and I found his review. Let me, let me read this to you. And I'm pretty sure this is his review, because it sounds like him. I've been riding for over 20 years, and these are the best bindings I've ever had. I surf as well, so I think I need more stiffness and power than the average rider. Yeah, because you're fucking special. Now, I, I kind of lost interest in snowboarding a few years ago, but it was revived when I bought a pair of Union Force. Like, I had no idea how much effort had been put into the technology that they'd been working on this like it was the cure for cancer. The force felt a little too soft, though, so I searched for a stiffer and better binding, and these are just perfect. It's so easy to ride with these. Everything has become easier. I go faster, turn harder, jump higher, spin easier. I never lose my balance. It's just incredible how much good equipment can perfect your riding. I have Burton Ruler boots, and they're definitely too soft, but with these bindings, it's fun. My old Rome artifact was on its way out, but with these bindings, it's also just fine. I can't imagine what it will be like when I get a new stick. Does anyone see any issue with this review out there? Chad? <laughs> Chad? <laughs> yes. See, even Chad agrees with me here. There is a lot wrong with this review. He's riding soft boots on a soft board with a really stiff binding. Now, personal preference, that's not a problem, but... The fact that they, he says he never loses his balance with these tells me he can't fucking snowboard. And the fact that for 20 years he's ridden shit-ass equipment and couldn't believe that equipment got better, it tells me he doesn't fucking snowboard at all. He is a five-day-a-year rider. Jason, you didn't influence shit. In fact, you just look like a no-talent ass clown. In fact, you look like someone that would probably listen to The Good Ride. So maybe you should stop commenting on our videos and fuck off to over there. I don't really care, but I'm going to leave it to the court of public opinion on this show to what they feel about Jason Eaton. And in fact, you can leave a comment for us down below. Chad will be screaming. On a lighter note with comments that I think need to be read, we got one from a guy called Snowboarder. Well, Vail banned snowboarders at any Vail-owned resort for the 2020-2021 season, and they basically gave all snowboarders the middle finger at this point. Link to an unofficial network's April Fool's Day article. The ban. What snowboarders should do? Question mark. Burton sabotage stupidity round two. My response. Clearly, you don't know what a work of satire is. Not the sharpest tool in the shed over there, but this is the response that makes me laugh. I just talked with a friend of mine who works out west and found out it's fake. Thank God.
You just made me touch my fucking face with a facepalm. That's... That's the kind of incompetency I'm dealing with in the comments section. Please, for the love of fucking God, if you don't have a brain, don't comment. Think before you post, people. Anyways, this has been the new Angry Snowboarder Morning Daily whatever show you want to call it. It's still raw and new and we haven't figured everything out, but we're going to add more segments to it and more skits and comedy and... We're definitely setting up the Google phone number so you guys will be able to call in and bitch at us. So if you thought some of the comments we get are stupid, I can't wait to see what some of these voicemails sound like. That's, that's going to be fucking phenomenal. Anyways, if you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not going to miss any of the videos we've got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you'd really like to support us and you have the financial means to, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Abram Lefebvre, and this is Chadwick Von Chaddington from Chadstein the Third. We'll see you guys in another video.